Alrighty guys, in this video, we're going to learn how to write a coffee shop business plan. We're going to focus more on the topic of keys to success. So in this business plan, essentially what we're going to do is we're going to highlight our um, our strategies as far as how we're going to go about um, succeeding in our coffee shop business. So as we see, we're just going to exit out of here. Oops. So what we're going to use as far as um, creating our business plan, we're going to actually use Grammarly. Now, the reason why I like Grammarly is because you know, as you're typing in, you know, your business plan or as you're even typing any form of document, essentially uh, Grammarly will be able to um, notify you on some of the errors, some of the spelling mistakes that you may, that may have occurred and be able to just give you suggestions as to what other words you can use that would better um, that would be a better fit for what you're trying to write out. So I prefer to use Grammarly most of the times. Very good application. You can actually get it as a Google extension. If you're using Google Chrome or if you don't have Google Chrome, you can actually just type in Grammarly.com and still get the same results. So we're just going to click a new document here. And we shall begin the process, you guys, we shall begin the process. Alrighty now. So the first thing we want to put is if we're going to write our business plan, um, we're going to actually put let's talk talk about key to success. So once your um, investors or whoever that's reading your business plan um, gets to this section, they'll have more clarity as as opposed to as far as how you're going to achieve your success in your coffee shop. So that's the whole goal in this section here is just to be able to outline some of the strategies that's going to give you a more competitive advantage to uh, become more profitable in your coffee shop. So we're going to put key to success. key to success. So we're just going to essentially bold it. We're going to make this like heading one or heading two. I like heading two actually. That's more better. Alrighty. So key to success, that's going to be our first heading. Alrighty. Now what are we going to put here? Um, so key to success. So in this case, you know, you want to be creative. You want to think of some of the strategies that you know that you have, um, that's going to more than likely work in your favor. So there's no there's no um, standardized standardized way of going about even writing your business plan. Usually you just want to include what you know, that's going to hit the nail on the head and exclude the ones that's that's not, you know, that's not going to have the same impact. So the, the goal of writing your business plan is to is to um, is to hit the nail on the head. You know, you want to make sure that the, the person that's reading it is going to understand exactly how you're going to go about achieving your success in your coffee shop. So when it comes to doing proceeding in that uh, manner there's no there's no real formula the, the best formula is to make sure that it hits the, it hits the nail on the head so now we have here a key to success so the first thing we're going to put we're actually going to continue off of the um business plan that we was writing on previous videos so we're going to actually continue using beans and cream cafe because i just think it rolls off the tongue very well so we're going to say uh beans and cream cafe believes that the company as proposed holds these keys to success. Alrighty, so we have here Beans and Creams Cafe believes that the company as proposed holds these keys to success. So what are some keys to success that we can, you know, say that we have an advantage on. So let's just say, um, let me put the bulletin list because we're going to have a couple of lists that we're going to put. So we're going to say, let's just say, for example, um, the owner, the owner's characteristics, or actually, let me put um, charismatic. The owner's charismatic and altruistic personality along with invaluable I love that word valuable <laughs> invaluable knowledge profound insights so you got to make it sound very sophisticated you got to make it sound so so elegant you know the, the the more elegance the more like ooh it hits you know it hits really hard you know but you can really just keep it simple. I, I like to go the extra mile and just make it more, you know, but actually the best thing is to just keep it simple, keep it easy to read, keep it basic. 
but I like to challenge myself to just throw in some words and even worse to throw in some words that I personally <laughs> don't, don't even use most of the time, but just to, just to have some, add some character to the business plan. You know, sometimes the person who's reading it, usually they're very sophisticated. So they, you know, this will kind of give a little shock value. So the owner's charismatic and altruistic personality, along with invaluable knowledge, profound insights, strong leadership, qualities and deep and a deep desire and passion to see the coffee shop rise in profitability profitability Boom. So we have the owner's charism uh, the owner's charismatic and altruistic personality, along with invaluable knowledge, profound insights, strong leadership qualities, and a deep desire and passion to see the coffee shop rise in profitability. Ooh, rise in profitability. So that lets you know that the owner, you know, although the owner is passionate about their business, but the owner also goal is to see the coffee shop coffee shop rise in profitability. So you always want to make sure that. You're always talking more about trying to see something become profitable, profitable, you know, so that it doesn't seem like you're just starting a business just to just to fulfill other needs. That's not really I mean, other needs are important, like you need satisf satisfaction from knowing that you were able to accomplish your dreams by starting your business. But for other people to participate in your um in your business, they need to know that that you are set to make profits. You know, you, you have to make sure you, you establish that so that they can be like, OK, this person is is trying to make money. So let me help this person make money by giving them money and the resources in order to help them help me. You see what I'm saying? So that's how that's the perception. That's the approach you have to make it where. So you have to you have to kind of make it where you kind of don't need you kind of don't need the person to give you the money. But in the same time, it would be great if the if you were to get the investment you need in order to start your business. So you want to position yourself like that. All right. So and, and here's the good thing about Grammarly. As you can see, I typed in the owner's charismatic and it says. It seems that this noun form may be incorrect. And then it just crossed this out and it'll tell you that use this one. And boom, it looks even better, more professional. This is the best thing to be using, you guys. If you guys are uh, thinking about anything as far as writing a business plan, as far as even sending out emails, as far as even communicating with um, communicating with um, uh, professionals, this is just the best way to, to really like this is a free resource. You cannot go wrong over here. It just makes you look more professional. Alrighty, so we got it good. To err is human. To edit, divine. Wow, that's I didn't even see, I didn't even notice that. You see here it says to err is human. To edit, divine. <laughs> Man, they did really good on that one. Alrighty, so now next let's all right. So what are we gonna put here? So we have okay. Beans and Cream Cafe believes that the co the company as proposed holds these uh, keys to success. So we have the first one. Now the second one, we're gonna we're gonna probably put something up, up the lines of um, we're gonna say on the second one, a well planned marketing strategy that will start with basics and adds sophistication as the business grows excuse me as the business grows Okay, good, good, good. As the business grows. Alrighty, so a well-planned marketing strategy that will start with basics and add sophistication as the business grows. So as we can see here, we're gonna clean up some of our errors. We have um we're just I guess they want us to put a little dash right there because a well planned is like a one word, so it's just kind of like you know, making sure that that's that's the way how you want it to be read. Then it sophistic oh see, I spelled sophisticating wrong. See, I was typing so fast. Or I was typing slow, but <laughs> I'm all one thing about me, you guys, I'm all, you know, um, I'm all about accuracy, you know, so sometimes even if I approach things at a more slower rate, I like to make sure that it's all accurate as much as possible. So, yeah, I'm usually the person who is, um, you know, when you're I'm usually the person that is probably the last person to finish the test. <laughs> Everybody is finished. Like 
every every time in my class, everybody would finish their test. I would always be the last person. I'm always the last person because I just want to make sure that everything is done correct. That's all, you know. So as as embarrassing as it is that I'm always the last person, but accuracy is so important. That's the way you um you eliminate any mistakes because if you fail your test because you was going so fast, then you have to do it all over again. So why not just take your time and do it right, do it correct. And as you grow, as you do it, perhaps your speed will will get more more better. So yeah, I'm always that person. So as you can see here, it says sophistication. We're just going to put that there, change. Boom, voila, voila. Fantastic. Alrighty, so now we're looking pretty good, you guys. It says well-planned marketing strategy that will start with the basics and add sophistication as the business grows. So what do we what do we mean by sophistication, right? Well, that basically is saying, well, you know, we may look in towards other marketing avenues such as, you know, social media marketing, probably, um, probably, Social media marketing, probably influencer marketing, probably, you know, postcards or whatever kind of um, marketing plan that would make sense that we're going to implement later on. So a well-planned marketing strategy strategy um, that starts with the basics, the basics could just be just getting your, your business on Google Maps. I mean, that is a marketing strategy, believe it or not. <laughs> just get it on Google Maps and then just wait for the verification code to come to your to your location. You verify it with Google <clears throat> and then you would just appear on the Google Maps. I mean, that's really the basics, honestly. And then if you want to add sophistication, you could just like you can just like um looking towards marketing, you know, look towards even using Google ads or even using like any kind of social media that would make sense that would grow your business. Because at the same time, you also want to consider that you want to service your local customers, but you also want to have a separate entity. I don't want to say separate entity, but more like a separate. um I would say maybe department that also can serve service uh, customers worldwide. So you also, so for example, let's say you're serving coffee locally and you know, all the good stuff, but maybe you might consider selling coffee ground online and sell it to whoever wants your coffee grounds, you know, some, you, you know what I'm saying? So you always want to look towards um, thinking like that so that you have the ability to scale. You know, you don't want to be just servicing local. You always want to think, okay, how can I scale? You want to allow yourself to have the ability to scale your business at all times. So you want to always have that because see local doing local business is good because at least you can monitor your competition. You don't make you, you won't have that much people that you have to compete with for the same customer. So usually local businesses, even though they still pose their own challenges, but it's more easier, more doable. It's more manageable as a computer trying to start a business online, starting a business online. There's too many variables. There's too many things that can, you know, steer left and right at any minute. So you always want to look towards having two forms of kind of business local and global so that you can participate in the global. All right. So now the next thing is, um, so now the next thing is, so we're going to say negotiating with social media influencers, negotiation, negotiating with social media influencers. with potential clients. Oh, did I say clients? Negotiating with social media influencers Let me actually back backspace. Negotiating with social media influencers by the use of and effective now this is all on the spot you guys you know i had a little draft about, about how i'm making this but this is all on the spot this is just to at least so you can see the process of creating something that would you know make your business plan look more attractive you know so it's, it's all about attraction it's all about attraction okay you want your business plan to just you want it to have that kind of feature you want it to what person looks at it they just be like wow you know what? I just want to participate in this, you know? So it's all about attraction by the end of the day, you guys, you know, it's like, all right. So negotiation with social media influencers by the use of an effective um, advertising campaign, advertising uh, campaign. Good. So this is basically, this is essentially like, you know, negotiating what you will be doing as a coffee shop owner, right? Well, let's just say you're, when you're looking for expansion, you might want to negotiate with some social media influencers. So let's say you're, you're selling coffee ground. 
as opposed to you're selling coffee ground, you're selling anything coffee related or whatever, or anything that's catchy, you maybe even clothes if, if that's what it boils down to. Then you want to look towards negoti- um, negotiating with social media influencers that would fit that realm of what you're doing and then being able to come to some kind of um, agreement or a form of payment. You may have to even pay up front and hope for the best and see how that goes and then learn from that experience and then make suggestions and, and keep moving from there. So and that's that's if you're selling like products worldwide, you know, so that's the best. That's what that that's what that line is basically for. So now we're going to say the next one we're going to consider is um, we're going to say. Uh, carefully. Considered. Market uh, segmentation. Now, like I said, you guys, you don't have to use these kind of words. You know, this is just me personally. I like to challenge myself putting new words, you know, but really and truly the best way you can just say is carefully. You could just say carefully considered. You know, the the audience in which who you're going to be targeting, it could be as simple as that or just be like we did research on looking into who's going to be the best um, kind of customers that will come to my coffee shop. So I just like to use fancy words, you know. Carefully considered market segmentation and target market choices. Have identified a niche. So it's always, it's always good to mention that you have a niche. A niche is always like a niche essentially is about doing something that not not a lot of people are doing but at the same time what is it that they're what you're doing is um something that's still valuable you see what I'm you understand so mentioning that you that you're you know, that you're in a niche will make you look more like somebody who's looking for opportunity a person who likes a person because you don't want to be picky about what you're doing you you always want to be looking towards where can I dominate where can I part- what can I participate in and how can I utilize my knowledge my experience my resources to dominate this situation in this niche so you always want to be moving like that you always want to be uh moving like that so we have uh carefully considered market segmentation and target market choice have identified a niche with little little competition so what this means for example is um what this means is for your coffee shop let's let's assume that Maybe your coffee shop is going to be, oh, excuse me. Maybe your coffee shop is going to be targeting towards um, young people with, between the ages of like 18 to 25. And maybe your, your, your coffee shop is going to kind of allow that, that, that uh, atmosphere to foster for those um, individuals. Or it could just be the mere fact you could just, it could just be a niche, a niche doesn't have to be. A niche doesn't have to really be um, the type of people you're targeting. It could just be really and truly that you you discovered a place that not there's no coffee shop there. And, you know, for a fact that it's going to thrive in that location. That's a niche, honestly. Well, you know, that's that's kind of a niche. But you just want to establish how in the hell are you going to make some money? That's just the whole goal. OK, and I'm, 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 excuse me for my language, but that's just the bottom line. How in the hell are you going to make income from your coffee shop? That's what you need to elaborate on. So. Oh, all right. So now carefully. Okay. So now we can see here. I use, you know, we need to clean this up. Oh, I don't need a comma there. Carefully considered market segmentation and target market choices have identified a niche with no competition. Feels like a comma should be there. Alrighty. So now what's the next thing we're going to say? Well, the next thing we're going to say is, um, the principles, the principles. And that's all I want for you guys. I just want you guys to, um, you know, to be to understand what's going on, to be able to make a good decision for yourself. I want you guys to really, you know, live the life that you're supposed to live. You know, I don't you know, because when you, you when you guys go into college or going to school, there's a lot of things that they don't really teach you. And, and the reason why is that is because what they're selling you is mostly the experience of going to college. They're not really most of the times they're not really selling you the um what you need to know. So you could be a, a successful individual. They're usually selling you. They're usually selling you. um experience now the experience is, is not a bad thing but you need to be somebody has to be honest with you guys so that you guys can be able to um make the right decisions otherwise you guys will fall into fall into the wrong trap so 
that's one of the reasons why I started a cafe Academy because I want to make sure that at least you guys have the right information and be able to take the right approach and not fall victim to, um, to something that's like, you know, that won't help you. All right. So now we're at, okay. The principal's ability to manage time and money resource resource okay great cool wow yeah mm -hmm. so what i put here is the principal's ability to manage time and money resource let me clean this now what does this mean essentially what this means is um the principal meaning that you the, the owner i just put the principal the principal's ability to manage time and money resource basically is saying that the owner <clears throat> ability to manage time and money is going to be a valuable asset towards the success of a coffee shop. And that is true though, because if, if, if you're not good with your time and you're not good with the money, it's over. It doesn't really matter how smart you are. You could be a genius. It doesn't matter. You have to learn how to manage your time. And most importantly, you have to learn how to manage your money because you need to know how to deploy your money. You have to learn how to, you have to learn how to turn $500 into a thousand dollars through your coffee shop. You have to, you have to master that, you know, so that's why it's saying the ability to manage time and money resources. So you, so you know how to manage time to get the most of your time and to get the most out of a situation time. And you know how to use the money in a way that will, um, that will increase your revenue tenfold. So that's really a skill in and of itself. <clears throat> Honestly, if you have no skill in nothing, if you just have good time and money resource skills and you know how to turn nothing into something, doesn't at that point it's like it doesn't really matter what you do in yourself with yourself you, you always you'll see success in, in in every direct in every direction Alrighty, so now what's the next thing we're going to put here to make your your coffee shop business plan look really good well we're going to say um well let's throw a little bit of a little bit of passion in there you know let's not make it all you know too like structured you know so let's just say for example we're going to say the principles And when I say the principal, what I mean is the owner. The principles. Yeah, because when I'm writing stuff, I like to just use, I like to make it look really nice. I don't know. <laughs> Probably because I'm a nerd. I might be a nerd, you guys, but, you know, I just like to make things look a little more sophisticated. The principles inherit, inherent enjoyment of service. Oh, actually, let me put um, of servicing customers and providing an excellent customer service experience. Let me clean that up. Clean. All right. So what I put here is the principles inherent enjoyment of servicing customers and providing an excellent customer service experience. So what does this mean? Well, coffee shop is really is more of a social kind of um, business, right? So when people it's really important customer service, it, it sounds very vague customer service, but what we're really what we're really mentioning and you can actually go further in details. This is just the basics. What you really could be saying is um, your the ability for you to foster an environment that will um, that will essentially make the customers feel like they have a second home. And it will um, make them want to come back more and more and more. And your coffee shop fosters this kind of um, environment for for freelancers that can you know be productive and doing their work for people to go on coffee dates. You also have it have it set up where um, where people can just meet other people and just have a good time and just socialize about politics and social socialize about what's going on around the area or whatever. So. That's what a coffee shop is for, though. I'm telling you, it's like it's, 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 I, I love going to coffee shop. I love going to coffee shop. It's just a nice place. I always go to coffee shop. I bring my laptop. I do my work there, and I do, get myself a coffee. I always get myself um what I always get. It's called a uh, peppermint mocha. No, no, no. The coffee I always I always get was called. It's been a while though, but it's called peppermint. Um, usually I go to Starbucks, but I actually go to another. I go to a private coffee shop around where I stay. And um, yeah, this thing is called peppermint something. I forgot the name, but I'll let you guys know. It's just my favorite. I always get it all the time. 
so we already got so we're looking pretty good here so now yeah so now what's the next thing we should put well i think that's pretty much it so as we scroll up we can scroll up we see here key to success beans and creams cafe believes that the company as proposed hold these keys to success and then we have our success list listed here so it looks pretty good pretty simple pretty basic you can alter this you can um change out certain words if you want to simplify it more or if you want to add more complexity to it um and just basically have it set up organized make it look clean so now um we're, we're gonna on the next on the next one we're gonna put we're gonna have a little uh, a separate section it's not a, it's not a big section but we're just gonna put why are we in business now this is not this is not necessarily important to i don't want to say that it's not important but it's not a standardized way of writing a business plan, you know? So it's like, what we're going to put is why are we in this business? And that's, that's something that a person would want to know a, a, a person who's going to give you a person that's going to, an investor that's going to give you the money would like to know why in the hell are you in this business? There's so many other kind of business. So you have to be able to kind of explain that so they can be like, Oh, okay. It makes sense. You're in this business because X, Y, and Z. Okay, great. Cool. You know, you, you know, so you won't see this in the business plan template. You know, sometimes you have to just make up your own section and just make it interesting and make it make it make sense. It's all about making it make sense. So we're going to put why are we in this business? You will never you will never find a template like this, though. I'm telling you all these because most of these templates you see online, they're just too standardized. They're too basic. It's like it's not really fostering creativity. And and if you're and if your business plan sounds so generic, no one's going to want to read it. The people wants to read something that's very innovative, very creative, and it just it has to have some human touch. So let me actually make this um a little bit bigger. Did I what, what did I do for this one? I would like for this to have that little the um what's it called italic, italic. Yeah, I like that italic. It kind of makes it look a little cool like that. So I'm actually gonna do the same thing here. Make it italic. key to success and if you look closely i usually like to keep my things a uh, key um title case so what that is is like basically like every letter it will have a capital letter except for like two and a two and a and stuff like that it just makes it look more more better i would like to do that for this but i, I think i'll just pass for right now but just know that um title casing does make it look a little more organized too so if you're going to make title case make it like um make it appropriately but just to uh, keep keep moving here so now yeah so now we want to answer why are we in this business now you need to be able to answer this question and you can put this underneath the key to success that that it would make sense for them to um, see that so now we're going to say okay where where are we in this business now at, on a, uh, on another video I actually put that on um i think one of the video i think i think it's the video called how to start a coffee shop um i think it's episode number 5 so we're, i'm actually going to take that one cuz i like i actually like that so why are we in this business? We're going to say the reason why I am in the coffee shop business is because of my profound understanding of what makes a coffee shop coffee shop great clean that understanding the reason why i'm in what well, the reason why i'm in a coffee shop business is because of my profound understanding of what makes a coffee shop great now we're gonna say i've been conducting small market research to see what are some of the needs that consumers would want in a coffee shop? I'm telling you guys, you guys will, they will never teach you guys this stuff in school. That's a shame. They will never teach you guys how to just be creative when you're making stuff. It don't have to be, it don't have to be like everything standardized. It's like, see, when I, before, before I started doing businesses, you know, before I started doing the, um, showing people how to grow the coffee shop. I was also doing real estate before I was doing real estate. Um, I used to, I used to work for, for some jobs. Now, the thing about when I was sending applic when I was sending my resumes to get a job, I, I always 
with resumes, it's, it's never, it's never, my resumes were never generic. Like every time I sent a resume, it was a guaranteed call. Like I was, it was, a, it was a, re- a recession proof resume. Now, the reason why is because I never followed the same template. Like on my resume, it will be a picture. You'll see a picture of me and it will look so personalized. It will look like it, it will look so different compared to everybody else's resume. And I, I would always include my cover letter and my cover letter. It's like you get to know what I do. There'll be a picture of me. There'll be a, a description of what I've done and I will create like a story. So with the, with the cover letter, I always create like a little story so that the person who's reading it is reading a story and not reading a resume or a cover letter. So it's like, you know, you make them want to call you when you do that. So I, I've always I've always landed every jobs like I, the minute I send an application, I get the job immediately because what people are looking for is something different. You know, they're always looking for something different. People are always looking for something different. If you can understand that, you will always see success all of the time, all of the time, because the thing is, the thing about it is the way how school teaches people, right? They're, they're, they're not really, they need to be honest and let people know how humans are. You need to understand how people are. Okay. If something is new and different, people will gravitate to it, especially if it's something of value, right? So that's the process of, um, that's the process that I use when I, when I was looking for a job. Now, how did I figure this out through, t- through t- um, trial and error? I just tested it out. I used a generic resume and cover letter, never got a call back. I decided, you know what, let me throw a picture of myself on there. Let me tell a story. Let me throw some examples of some of the success, some of the success that I've encountered and some of the failures and what I learned from those failures. And let me make it really juicy. You know, they just call, they always call me, always call me up. But that's why when I'm telling, when I'm showing you guys that the key to get the, in order for you guys to grow your coffee shop successfully, you have to understand how people think. You have to understand how investors think, you know, and you have to understand that they don't have to invest in your business. They can use their money towards they could just they could do something fun with, with the money that they've made, however they made it. So you wants to make them you wants to make them think like, OK, if I give you the money, you will be able to make it more. So you need to make sure that you're 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 you, you fixate your business plan to where a person will look at it and be like, OK, if I invest my money in this person's coffee shop. This person seems like the right candidate to do it. This person has a detailed plan on how to achieve it. And this person seems very promising. And that's all it is. You just have to seem very pro- promising. Now, will you, will you deliver on that promise? Now, that's the question. We do not know. But usually people are betting on the promise. That's the that's what investment is. We don't know how things will turn out. <laughs> Nobody knows how things will turn out. We're only investing on the possibility of something turning out good because that's all you can bet on. So. So that's why when it comes to creating your 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 business plan, you want your plan to look promising. Will you deliver? We do not know, but it looks promising. And that's all that matters because you might deliver. You might deliver. You might deliver. So we're just going to continue writing here. I've been conducting small market research to see what are some of the needs that consumers would want in a coffee shop. Okay, now based. Based on my small market research, I have found I have found that consumers are looking for a coffee shop. With a luxurious interior design. And that's, that's, that's the truth. I mean, I mean, think about it. If just think about it, think, just think about it just for one second. Do you honestly think that people are going to coffee shops just to get coffee? Not really, because you can get the, um, you can, you can get the Mr. Coffee coffee machine and just make coffee at your house. Right. It's not, it's not, it doesn't really take that much effort for you to just, for you to just, um, make your own coffee. I mean, you can, it's just right. If you have it in your, in your kitchen, you can just, you have the machine, you have the coffee ground. That's it. You don't need to go out to go get coffee. So then you, so then the question is why are people going to coffee shops? Right? Why is the, what's the reason? Well, there's something that's being offered. That's more than just coffee. Obviously. Now it could be that you do have better coffee that they have better than the ones that the consumers would have at the house. So maybe, maybe your consumers 
they use they use Folger coffee, you know, the Folger coffee, the, you know, the regular brand coffee. It could just be the case that you have the best coffee ground. That's it. Or maybe you have the best setup. Or even if you don't have the best coffee ground, your presentation of of showing like you have the best stuff makes it makes them want to be like, OK, I feel like Beans and Cream Cafe, their coffee must be very good because the whole pre presentation of how it looks, everything, it just looks like it's better. It may not even be better, but the perception is that it does look better. So that could be just the mere fact, you know, and um, people will go to your coffee shop and also they'll go there. But they're not just there to get coffee shop. You know, people know that they can also get themselves some food and snacks like that. So that's why it's more than just coffee, really. But we want to call it coffee shop because that is the foundation of it also. So now what I said here was I found that consumers are looking for a coffee shop with a luxurious interior design. And that's the that's the case, you guys. I mean, you got you guys can literally you like you. I'm telling you, you guys are going to laugh at your success. You're going to laugh at it. You want to say why? Because you literally can be you literally can have the same coffee the same coffee ground as your consumers, the, you know, the, 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 the cheap brand, you can literally have the same coffee, but just because the interior design of your coffee shop, right? Just because it looks so, so astonishing, like the inside, it looks all nice and white, the chairs, everything just looks so beautiful, right? Just because of that, people will come and they will buy just because of that. Yes. Just because of that. That's the wow factor. People will come in there, take pictures, you know, People will just associate that you have the better quality coffee and it's still it's not the same. It's still the same thing. So you have to understand people, how people think, and they will not teach you this stuff. I'm telling you, they will not teach you that stuff. They won't show. They won't even show you guys. Ugh, that's a shame. All right. So I have found that consumers are looking for a coffee shop with a luxurious interior design. That will that will wow them. Of course, that's what they're looking for. I mean, that's not the only thing, but that's one of the elements. That's one of the factors. I mean, if your coffee, if you just had a, if you just had a coffee stand now, now this is, like I said, this is all depending upon where you try to structure your business. You know, you could, it could just be the case that your interior design look like, look, don't look all that well, but because you're the only person that's serving coffee, right? People may still come to you. Even if you're in, even if the inside of your coffee shop looks terrible, people will still come probably because maybe you're the only close one. You're the one close by. And maybe you also sell food and stuff like that. But if you want to price your coffee for a higher price, right? Because see, see, if you don't do that, you, you, you would have to sell your coffee at the reasonable price, like $3, $2 can't be any more than that. But if you, if your interior design looks really nice and you, and you have a nice presentation, you can sell a coffee for $10, no problem. $10 people will not mind buying that. That's more profit. 30 cents. It's a 30 cents product. And you just sold a coffee for $10. How did you do that? Well, the interior design of your coffee shop looks good. Your presentation was good. It was justified. It was justified for somebody to pay ten dollars for your cup of coffee. It was justified by that. So th these are the these are the kind of psych psychological things you have to understand when it comes to business in general. But we're talking coffee shop. When it comes to coffee shop, people buy for reasons that sometimes doesn't make sense to you. You know what I'm saying? So that's why you have to understand it. That's why that's why I always say understand it, because it won't make sense to you. It's like, why would somebody pay ten dollars? But understand it. The person who the person who's spending ten dollars for a cup of coffee, they they just have the money. It's not a problem for them. So don't think don't think that offering something cheap will make people come to you. You, you don't want to have that mindset. People don't people do not mind spending money. OK, people do not mind spending more than what they can afford. They do not mind that. But they need they need a reason to do so. You guys, you have to give them the reason why they should spend more than they should. Now, if you could establish that reason, you're good to go. Now you'll see profit like that. So that's my approach. That's, that's usually my approach when it comes to growing a business is that you got to establish that reason. You got to establish that reason. Alrighty. So now we have based on my small market, uh, based on my small market research, I have found that consumers are looking for a coffee shop with a luxurious interior design that will wow them. That will wow them already now. What's next? Um, I believe that I am the right candidate. So we're going to say, I believe that I am the right candidate. I believe that I am the right uh, candidate. Yeah. Because I believe that I am the right candidate because I am a creative 
visionary. I believe that I am the right candidate because I am a creative visionary and at the same time, I also have available resources. that will give me an edge to grow a coffee shop much easier. Now it looks, it looks pretty better. Now it's like, I believe that I am the right candidate because I am a creative visionary. And at the same time, I also have available resources that will give me an edge to grow a coffee shop much easier. Now you see how, now you see how it looks. Why are we in business? This is the reason why we're in business it's not because we're passionate. I mean, you can be passionate, but you don't want to, you don't want to sound like somebody who, um, who's making decisions based on feelings. You want to make, you, you want to, you want to be a person, you want the perception of yourself to be a person of someone who takes calculated risks, calculated risks. So when you read, when you, when, when the person reads your thing and it says, um, your business plan and it says, why are we in business? And you say, the reason why I am in coffee shop business is because of my profound understanding of what makes a coffee shop great. And you found out that consumers are looking for a coffee shop with a luxurious interior design that will wow them. And then you also say that because and you also justify that by saying that you're the right candidate because you have you you are very, you know, you have a creative vision. And at the same time, you have the available resources that will give you an edge to grow a coffee shop. So just mentioning just mentioning the part that says I have available resource that will help me to give me an edge to grow a coffee shop that shows that the reason why you're in this business is because you realize the opportunity that will allow you to 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 reach success much more better, much more quicker. And this this is what you want to elaborate on. So when a person reads something like that, they're like, OK, this person seems like someone who's um who's on the right track, you know, and that's what you want to look at. So. All right. Yeah. And, and, and if, if you guys ever need more um, understanding about, you know, at, we have a coffee shop academy, um, the coffee shop masterclass course, if you go to. um www.thecafeacademy.com cafe the cafe academy.com get yourself the coffee shop master course believe me when i say that that master course will change your life i will not you your life will be changed <laughs> your life will be changed because the way how i made the, the the course is i made it to where it's nothing but the truth and only but the truth okay now the only consequence is it may not be as entertaining but that's the sacrifice that sometimes you have to make in order to you make sure that the people that are getting the products is getting the real product, you know? So it's not always, it's not everything, everything that's anything that's good for you is not usually always pleasure, pleasurable, you know, so, you know, so, so this, that's the sacrifice I make, but I, I know for a fact that you guys are going to reap the reward. You guys are going to reach success. If you get the coffee shop master, the master, if you get the coffee shop masterclass course at the cafe academy.com, you guys are going to see success so fast. I'm telling you. So I made sure I made sure to make that sacrifice where it, it won't be entertaining. But once you finish watching the course, your life will just change immediately. So if you haven't get the, if you haven't get the course yet, go to uh, www.thecafeacademy.com and get the masterclass course. Um, we have dropped the price down to five hundred dollars. It was originally a thousand six hundred. But I wanted, I wanted to make sure that you guys were able to get the course affordably, you know, because by the end of the day, you know, I'm fine as far as like, you know, income wise and things like that. So that's why I just I just made sure to make that where it's affordable for you guys to get. And at the same time, you know, and as a compensation, obviously, you know, the the the, the money I would probably make is to re reinvest that in towards, um, you know, ads and stuff like that. And just to get the, in the help, you know, help grow, <laughs> help save people from making a bad decision by utilizing the money that I've made from the from the coffee shop course to help other coffee shop entrepreneurs because that's really the goal by the end of the day i just want to make sure you, that you guys are okay you know make sure that you guys are on the right track i don't want you guys to be failing because you didn't, you was uninformed like that's crazy like you should not be failing okay you don't want to fail in life okay no matter what they say they'll tell you failing you must fail you do not want to fail because you don't have the time and the efforts and the energy and the to fail like you don't know you need to learn now and know what to do and see things for what it is so that's what you're going to learn from that course. If you get that course, it will change your life. So now the next thing we're going to talk about is um, now another thing I want to add there was also from my other video. So we're going to put how we plan on achieving our goal. 
right? So that's that's the next topic. How we plan on achieving our goal. So we're gonna actually bold that and we're gonna make it um a title. Let me see how everything's looking. It's looking pretty organized. I like to keep things organized. Organization is important for you guys. Organization is always important. Clears your mind, clears it clears your mind and it, it allows you to when you're organized, it allows creativity to foster within yourself. That's that's what I've learned for um keeping everything organized. All right, so we're gonna say here, um, so how do we how do we plan on achieving our goal? So we're gonna say something of the lines of I actually have it written down there because I, I I put it in the other video, so I'm actually just kind of regurgitating the information. So we're gonna say, for example, initially to keep the operation. And this was something I just made on the spot, to be honest with you. I just literally made it on the spot. Like I, I, I saw the question. I'm saying, you know, I just thought of a question that I would ask and then I just answered my own question. So because I, so I, this is the question I would ask people, I'll ask you, how do you plan on achieving your your goal? So I just answered my own question. I said, well, initially to keep the operation cost low, just made it on. I just made it on the spot. I didn't really think too much of it because <clears throat> you have to learn how to just respond to questions like that. Like you have to learn how to just respond to any possible questions to, that would that will make you look like you don't know what you're doing you know so this makes you look like what you're doing so we're going to say initially to keep the operation cost low i will be responsible damn that was actually deep matter of fact that's it <laughs> that was actually very deep let me just let me just put that here response oh crap responsible boom that's it you guys there's actually more but this is it screw it how do we plan on achieving our goal initially to keep the operation to, to keep the operation cost low? I will be responsible. Oh, that's so sweet. Yeah. That, don't that just hit the nail on the head? But no, this is not the complete version. So I'm actually going to continue. I just I just like the word responsible. There's something about that word. It just just be responsible. That's it. All right. So for responsible for all activities. Related to growing. I'm a very meaningful person. I like things like that. It always hits me. It always hits me just thinking about it. All right. So coffee shop in the first six to 12 months. Look at, look at this now. Alrighty. So if we can look at this more, looks pretty, 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 looks pretty, pretty good. Pretty, pretty good. Pretty good. Alrighty. Look at this. So initially to keep the operation cost low, <clears throat> I will be responsible for all activities related to growing my coffee shop in the first six to 12 months. So what does this mean? Basically, this means that because you're probably on the budget, let's assume that you are low in money wise, right? So what you want to say is somebody asks you, how do you plan? How do you plan on succeeding and growing your coffee shop what do you tell them well you tell them initially to keep the operation cost low i will be responsible for all activities related to growing my coffee shop in the first six to 12 months well that sounds that sounds reasonable that sounds that sounds that's somebody that's um that has it kind of figured out because if you were to say if you were to say something that was not like this you know then you're, you're going to be faced with more questions i don't think you want to be asking any <laughs> answering any more questions than that so you better be honest if you don't be honest if you're not honest right you're going to be hit with more questions. If you're honest, no one's going to ask you questions. So always be honest. You you just have to answer one question. How do you plan on achieving your coffee shop success? Well, to keep the operation costs low, I'll be responsible for all the activities. Okay, no more questions to ask. Done. But if you say something like, if you say something like, how do we plan on achieving our goal? Well, we're going to, um, we're going to, you know, we're going to get the money over there. Then we're going to put it over there. Then we're going to start this over there. And then, then someone's going to ask you another question. That's what happens because you're not honest. Be honest. Say that this is what we're going to do because this is what we believe that we must do, you know? Alrighty. So now let me see. Um, yeah, I'm telling you guys, man, um, my phone is just ringing. I'm so glad I put it on mute because during the creating of this video, my phone is, has rung like 10 times right now. <laughs> I had to decline it like crazy. So uh, I always put your phone on silent before you guys do any recording. I'm telling you, it's just going to be very annoying because, you know, I get lots of calls, you know, I have a lot of um, dealings with. So now we're going to continue saying I will be the owner. Are you ready? Are you, are you guys ready for this? This hit? Here it is. Here it is. <clears throat> I'm going to say it with a passion with it. OK, <clears throat> I will be the owner. The CEO the manager and the barista. Wow. That sounds like all hats you're wearing. My fellow friends, you are wearing all hats. Okay. So this like, 
I will be the owner, the CEO, the manager, and the barista. Wow. Oh, it makes you want to shed a tear, don't it? Don't cry, you guys. Don't cry. This is what it's all about. It's all about just being honest. The more honest that you can be, sometimes just being honest, it just sets you free, man. I guess they weren't lying when they say that honesty sets you free because it really does in some ways. After six to 12, 12 months, I hope I'm in, I hope I, I actually hope I'm in the right uh right business because I sound like I could be some motivational speaker, right? <laughs> yeah, no, I hope I'm in the right in the right spot. But I I realize that it's more important for you guys for me to uh, help people not make bad decisions. That's really more important because I would rather you guys I would rather you guys uh I would rather save people from making bad decisions, you know. I don't want you guys to go through it. You don't have to go through it. All right, so now after six to twelve months, I will outsource labor and hire employees while focusing on managerial managerial duties bam you guys bam okay so now look after six to twelve months i will outsource labor and hire employees while focusing on managerial duties. Don't that sound very, don't that sound good? Just think about it. Somebody asks you right now, how do you plan on achieving your coffee shops, your coffee shop? Well, initially to keep the operation cost low, I will be responsible for all activities related to growing my coffee shop in the first six to 12 months. I will be the owner, the CEO, the manager, and the barista. After six to 12 months, I will outsource labor and hire employees while focusing on managerial duties. Don't that sound realistic? It sounds very realistic. I mean, it's, it's you're, you're telling the person, that after six to 12 months, you're going to, you're going to outsource labor, which means you're going to have somebody that's going to be the barista. You're going to have someone that's going to be the manager, and you're going to have someone that's going to be the CEO while you're focusing on managerial duties. Now, what is this managerial duties that you might be hearing around sometimes? Well, managerial duties basically means, I mean, it's a very, it's a very vague, very broad, but in this particular case, what it really means is anything related towards increasing your revenue for your coffee shop. So that means managerial duty for you is going to be you know, networking with influencers that will skyrocket your your coffee grounds online so that you can make a million dollars selling coffee grounds from your small coffee shop in wherever the hell it's located at, right? <laughs> That's managerial duties. Managerial duties such as maybe maybe you'll probably be doing the payroll. You can always outsource that too, but maybe you'll participate in doing payroll. Maybe you'll participate in doing like um furthering the company's uh profitability honestly that's all managerial duties is it's you know it's managerial duties is, is about you how are you going to make just you making your business better than what it was yesterday that's all it is really because you can't you can't think of you can't think of expansion if you if you're if you're making coffee for the customers you know if you're making coffee for the customers or you're managing your baristas there's no there's no time you don't have you won't have the much the the extra time to focus on something else that's going to be much more impactful and the other thing that will make it more impactful is you looking for marketing opportunities that will grow your revenue, that will grow your bottom line. So you always want to think about hiring people all of the time so that you can focus on the things that's going to be more impactful. That's the purpose of hiring. That's that's really how you become rich is you become rich by you. Initially, you may have to be everybody. So you have to have all the skills. But the most important thing is to free yourself the time so that you can be able to um focus on creating creating ideas and brainstorming with somebody or within yourself or just looking for any kind of information brainstorming that's part of the managerial duty brainstorming and thinking about how can we how can we sell this coffee ground online and make a million dollars this year how can we sell this coffee mug what kind of what kind of gimmick i know the word gimmick sounds kind of terrible but what kind of trend or gimmick or whatever that will make us a million dollars this year through um our coffee shop and that's but that's basically all it's about managerial duty so all right you guys so as you can see here we finish we, we pretty much finish uh a section of a business plan that you want to also include you want to include the key to success you want to elaborate on um what's gonna what why uh what's gonna make your coffee shop successful and what are the keys that you're gonna what are the things that you're gonna do and then after that you want to follow through by putting questions like this that makes your makes your business plan stand out it's going to stand out dramatically by saying something like why are we in this business i mean that's what people want to know okay 
Now, you will never see a template like that because, you know, templates are usually very broad. The purpose of a template is just to just to, for you to think of some ideas. You, you don't want to really follow exactly. I mean, you're, you're, you don't even have to have your executive summary as your first thing. I mean, you don't have to follow the rules. You, what you need to understand is because you could just you could just put this as your as your as your front cover. I mean, as funny as that might sound, but that might just be the best idea. You don't know that you, you won't never know. You, you have to you have to you can't you have to be like a scientist. You have to be a scientist, business science, because science is all about science is all about testing to see what works. And then whatever works, we, we continue with that. And whatever doesn't work, we discard that. And then, you know, but what, is there something to learn from that? You know, and so you always want to document everything that was working, what's not working. It's all about testing things out. So you don't need, you don't want to follow the same template that you see online. You can use it as a framework. It's good to use as a framework so you can know how to approach it, but you don't want to really, you know, and, and, and the reason why I'm telling you this is because I want you guys to get the money you need. You know, I want you guys to actually get the money. I don't want you guys to, um, I want you guys to be suffering, trying to grow your coffee shop business. That's crazy. You should be, you should just start it and you should just know that you're, you'll be fine. You need to have that sense of security that everything is going to be fine. And the only way you're going to have that security of knowing that everything is going to be fine is through honesty. And I want to make sure that you guys are getting the honest answers. And if you guys are looking to start, start your coffee shop, and you want to achieve growing your coffee shop today and go to uh, the cafe academy.com link will be provided in the description go to cafe uh, cafe the cafe academy.com get the coffee shop master class master class course and um once you purchase it watch the video it's it's it's, it's, it's a lot of it's it's, it's i want to say it's short but but it's 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 short I think with courses, courses usually are much more longer than that. So it's, it's actually like, I think three hours or four hours of, um, of, of content of showing you, showing you how to grow your coffee shop. But the thing about it is it's so much juice in there that just two minutes of it and you're going to be baptized just two two minutes of the course. When you watch the course, just two minutes, you're going to, you're going to die. You're going to be like, damn, why didn't I, why didn't I did this? Or why didn't I, um, I could have done that to make this situation better. It's just three, four hours of pure juice by the time you finish watching that course you're going to be a whole you're going to be a whole different person i'm telling you because you're going to get nothing but honesty and i want you guys to get honesty that's that's just my my thing on on um for people nowadays and that's the beautiful thing that we have today is we have the technology that allows people who are honest to deliver honest information <laughs> that's the beautiful thing about this online stuff man I'm, I'm not gonna lie to you guys so we pretty much finished with our partial business plan i mean if we were to really try to write a, a long detailed business plan we'll, we would probably be here for some days to weeks so i don't want to bore you guys to death hearing me talking all day you go insane <laughs> so we're just gonna this is just part of the business plan that you want to also include this is part of the section of what you want to include in your business plan so we're pretty much good good to go here all right you guys so this is the ending of our how to write a business plan keys to success i hope you guys achieve financial success uh, get the coffee shop, get the coffee shop masterclass course, change your life, make a difference and become a better version of yourself.